Thanks, Jose. Okay, so today we're going to talk about deep foundations. And specifically, we have we have three parts to our presentation. Um, in part one, we'll, we'll go over uh, uses of deep foundations, that is, why, why do we use them? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about working with the geotechnical engineer from the perspective of the structural engineer and talk about the mechanics of deep foundations for vertical lateral loading, uh, including a discussion about down drag. Uh, then after the, the Q&A session, we'll go on to part two, and we'll talk about different types of deep foundations from drilled piles, driven piles, micro piles, and, and some things that you might want to consider when selecting pile types. Um, I'll then talk about the International Building Code Chapter 18 requirements, primarily from a seismic perspective. Uh, these are pretty much the same requirements uh, in the in the 20, uh, 2015 code that were also in the 2012 code. Uh, then we'll talk about pile load testing, both static and dynamic. In part three, then, after the second uh, Q&A session, I'll talk about a design example, um, design of cast-in-place concrete piles for a specific building, a parking garage in San Diego. So as we start off, let, let, let's think about why, why it is that we use deep foundations. Uh, primarily, what deep foundations do is, is they transfer building loads uh, down from the, from the base of the building to competent soils uh, at depth. They're, they're used in order to reduce building settlements um, and also to provide resistance to uplift when, when necessary at the ends of lateral resisting elements in particular. We can use deep foundations also where, where the amount of foundation area that we have is, is just constrained. Um, if, if we have a, a small site and we just don't have enough room using the, the bearing capacity that's available to us at, at grade, uh, we may choose to, uh, to transfer those loads down to deeper, deeper levels just in, in order to get more capacity. Where we have sites that are subject to consolidation uh, of uh, young clay soils or due to liquefaction, then, then deep foundations will also help us in that regard. So when we work together as structural engineers with the geotechnical engineer, uh, I'm a big advocate of trying to do a better job of collaborating. Uh, what, what often happens in a typical process is the geotechnical engineer will determine the need for piles uh, and ask the structural engineer what typical foundation loads might be. You know, what, what are the maximum loads that you know are heaviest columns and maybe at some, at some locations where you may have uh, brace frames or shear walls. The geotechnical will then provide a report uh, indicating allowable pile loads for, for vertical loads and lateral loads. And the structural engineer reads the report and he says, okay, um, these are, I can use 100 ton piles, so therefore this is how many piles I need. And the geotech says that I can get 20 kips shear per pile, so he writes that on his drawings too. Uh, you know, the problem with this process is, is that it's, it's kind of a one-way process, and we really would like to have better collaboration between the structural and the geotechnical engineers. There may be a range of vertical capacities that could be possible for a site, uh, and the, the most efficient design may not be simply what, what the geotechnical engineer picks at his first pass. Um, and the lateral resistance is, is a lot more complicated than simply 20 kips per file or, or whatever uh, might be easy for, for the geotech to, uh, to indicate. And um, it really just requires some, some back and forth. With regard to the vertical loading, the the capacity it generally is going to depend on the length. There are a few few cases where where you have a direct end bearing pile at, at a at a bedrock interface, um, but in most cases you get some some skin friction along the length of a pile, and you may get some increased resistance toward the tip. Um, but uh, but generally a, a deeper pile will give you more capacity. It's it's very rare, in fact, that that the structural capacity is going to control the the overall capacity of the pile. It's it's almost always the geotechnical uh, capacity and therefore the length that will that will tell us how much we can get out of a pile. So the idea then is that the structural engineer should work with the geotech to understand the, that relationship 
you know, if, if the geotech has not provided the structural engineer with a with a chart that says here much, here's how much capacity you get for here's how much depth, uh, then ask for it. And then you can go go back and forth and decide what the most efficient uh, design might be for, for this particular project. 